Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, open thou our lips.
a reading from the book of Exodus. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people and they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them camped by the sea, by Philhirath, in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that God will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. The pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. <coughs> and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments is a liar and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Here ends the reading.
Lord, show thy mercy upon us.
welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral. Happy Easter. My name is Penny Bridges. I serve as the Dean or Senior Pastor of the Cathedral, and it's my joy to welcome you this afternoon, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith. Today has been a day of celebration. We had a baptism this morning, and we launched the congregational phase of our Music Room campaign. You'll see pictures in the back as you leave, um, the renderings and plans um, that give you a taste of what we are planning to give our choirs and our music ministry at last a place of their own, a safe, accessible, and functional space for rehearsals and for robing and for our music library. It's an exciting time. We have already raised nearly 80% of our goal, and we invite everyone to join us. Um, these uh, one-page brochures are in the porches if you want to pick one up on your way out. And if you are on our mailing list, you will receive um, a mailing this week with the brochure and other information. You can find um, lots of information and answers to many questions on our website, too, if you go to the Music Center page. On Fridays at 1 o'clock, we offer a free 30-minute organ recital every Friday right here. It's live-streamed, but it's so much better when you're in the space with this magnificent instrument. And next Saturday, we'll have one of our great hall concerts at 5 p.m. Um, featuring um, handbell choir. I'm looking forward to hearing our handbell choir friends again. Please stand as you're able for our closing prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular those viewing the eclipse. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that, as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.